All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at sine, cos, and tangent. These are three trigonometric functions, trigonometric, I have trouble saying that word. Uh, three trig functions, but they're the same idea. And you're going to see that once I teach you how to figure out all the stuff, how to figure out uh, angles with tangent and sides with tangent, you'll be able to really quickly pick up how to do sine and cosine as well. So here are three functions. Um, now, they all have to do with right angles. So always, we're going to be looking at right angle triangles. Now, right angle triangle has this square, which shows us the 90 degrees. That tells you where the right angle is. is. And it's uh, very useful. It's used in all sorts of portion, in all sorts of uh, sects of mathematics. Uh, with we use it in conjunction with uh, the Pythagoras theorem and sine, cos, and tangent, for example. So before we get into the functions, we're going to learn how to label the sides of a right angle triangle. Now, right here, you see this is theta. Theta is a Greek letter which is used as a variable to represent the angle. So wherever you see theta, that's the angle that we currently care about, all right? And we are going to label the sides using opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Now opposite is the side directly opposite to the angle theta. So if, we're, if we look at theta and then we draw a line straight across, that's our opposite side. Our adjacent is the one that's beside the angle. So you see how it's next to this angle? It's also next to the 90 degrees. It's where those two are. And then your hypotenuse is the longest side of your triangle. That never changes. Now, if I have my theta up here, my sides are going to be labeled differently. So they're, the opposite is going to be now down here. My adjacent is over here, and my hypotenuse, that's always across from this 90 degree guy, if you're looking for a reference point for that, okay? So the opposite is opposite to theta, and the hypotenuse is opposite to this square. If I have theta here, then my opposite is directly opposite to that. So I'm looking for the side, my hypotenuse is opposite to the 90 degree, and my adjacent is the one right beside the theta and the 90 degree. Okay, so always next to the angle, adjacent, hypotenuse is always opposite to the angle. So sine, cos, and tan are three main functions. They're shortened to sine, cos, and tan, even though when we write them out long, that's how they're spelt. And then theta is going to be the angle. We could use other Greek letters as well, like alpha, beta, gamma, if we're ever dealing with more than just theta, we, which is just what's standard used in, in math. Okay, so now let's get into actually calculating them. We're going to divide the length of one side by another side, but we need to know which sides. So let's have a look at some examples. So if we have the hypotenuse, oh, if we have the hypotenuse and the opposite side, we're going to use sine. So because the equation here is sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, and if we have the adjacent side and the hypotenuse side, we're going to use the cosine function. And if we have the tangent side, the, sorry, if we have the opposite and the adjacent sides, we're going to use the tangent function. So it all depends on which two sides you're currently working with that tells you which trig function to use. So a way to remember is SOHCAHTOA. And it works like this. Sine is opposite hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay? So that's how we remember it. And they're important because they let us work out angles when we know sides, and they let us work out sides when we know the angles. All right, so this is the first example in your notes. So let's have a look at that together. and write out the proper way of, uh, like look at the notation so that we can write them out properly. So always remember you're in degree mode right now. So get that straightened up. And I'm going to make sure this sets nicely. Okay. 
Okay, so here are your formulas for you to look at. And our first example, we're going to determine tan of x. Now, these two are the same triangles. All this question's asking you is to set up the ratio, okay? When it says determine tan x, set up the ratio. So what's the ratio here? Well, uh, we know tan is opposite over adjacent. So why not write that up here so that we can remember it and use that to reference? Okay. Now, what's the important angle for this first question here? X. So let's label this with our theta so we know that's important. And then what is this side going to be called? That's opposite because it's opposite to that angle. And then what is this side 12 going to be? That's going to be your adjacent. Okay. Now, I want to write out in terms of the letters in the line, in kind of the um, line segment notation, what is this side going to be called? YZ over, and what is this going to be called? XY. All right. So now if we write this out, what is the tangent X, what is that ratio going to be? 6 over 12. And what does that equal? Okay, so tan x in simplified is going to be either 1 over 2, or you could also write 0 0.5. It's a perfect nice decimal that you uh, can write, so it's you can just leave it as either one of those forms. This here? It's good to note, to make notation of what you're actually looking at, okay? So what you're going to be as a final answer is this here. And I do want to see this middle step as well, all right? So let's have a look at this here, tan Z. So tan of Z is going to equal, what are my line segment notations here? So this is my important angle, so I'm going to call that theta. And now what is this side called? That's my opposite, and this is my adjacent. So you notice how when I change theta, my opposite and adjacent, they switch as well? So it all depends on what the angle or where the angle is. All right, so opposite, that's going to be yx, and this is going to be yz. And yeah, it is important to have this written out so that you are referencing the proper line. So tan z is equal to opposite, which is 12, over adjacent, which is 6. And then what is this reduced to? Tan z equals 2. So this is what I want you to have as your final answer. And notice how when you're working with equations, you're solving for the same thing. So I'm working down. OK? All right. So this would be, yeah, this would be full marks, kind of leaving things out. Um, you're not being uh, complete in your answer. All right. Now this here, it says determine the measures of angle K and angle N. So first, we are going to look at angle K. So let's look at angle K and determine what it is. So we're going to call this theta, and what is this side going to be? Opposite, and what is this side going to be? Adjacent. So let's write tan angle K is equal to MN over KM. All right, and then let's fill in our numbers. Equals 9 over 13. And now we have to somehow get this angle K all by itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our shift button on our calculator. So use our shift or the second button on your calculator, and we have to get it to look like this. So we have angle K equals tan, and now this negative 1 means inverse function. And then we've got 9 over 13. So depending on the way your calculator works, you are going to have to figure out which, which, um, which sequence you're going to be pressing the keys in. So for me, on this calculator, I'm going to type 
second tan, and I get this tan inverse showing up. And then you need a bracket right there. If your calculator doesn't automatically put in a bracket, then put one in. And then you go 9 divided by 13. So that slash button is the divide key. And then hit enter. And this gives you the degree measurement. So I'm going to round that off to 34.7 degrees. And I'll write out the two different key sequences that are necessary. So you could either go 9 divided by 13 equals, and then have the second, and then the tan button, and then you hit enter. Or you could have the ta second tan and then a bracket, 9 divided by 13, and then enter. And that gives you both the same answer, 34.7 degrees. OK. Now, so I'm going to write this in here. Now let's very quickly see if we can figure out angle N. How would we use the information we have so far to figure out angle N? So angle N, we say 180 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 34.7 degrees, and that equals? 55.3 degrees. So that's the fastest way to figure out angle N. Are there other ways that we can figure it out? Sure there is, but that's kind of the quickest way. All right. So are there any questions so far? OK, so let's go over this question one more time. So we are looking for the angles. So this is when we use our shift or our second function, when we're looking for angles. Now, we figured out the ratio here, and we got that angle K is 34.7. So let's just write that out as 34.7 degrees. Now, uh, the question also to ask us to figure out what angle N is, right? Which means, what is this angle here, this, this third side? Well, what do all of the angles in a triangle add up to? The interior angles of all triangles, no matter what, adds up to 180 degrees. So if I know that this angle is 90 degrees because of the square, and I figured out that this angle K is 34.7 degrees, then what's left over? So that's what I'm doing when I'm taking 180 minus 90 minus the 34.7 gives me what's left over from the 180. Okay? So when do we use the shift or the second? The second button is when we are finding what? Angles. Okay? The second or the shift. That's when we're finding angles. So that's what we're doing right now. Okay. 